and Helen Peterson, Can't Even, How Millennials Became the Burnout Generation. Welcome to the world of millennials, a generation burdened with burnout. And Can't Even, How Millennials Became the Burnout Generation, and Helen Peterson analyzes the factors that have led to this troubling outcome. The book explores the micromanaged childhoods of millennials, the elusive promise of a college education, the exploitative nature of passion-driven work, the loss of job security, and the relentless pace of modern life. By delving into these themes, Peterson sheds light on the forces that have set millennials on a path to exhaustion and dissatisfaction, while offering insights into how things might change for the better. Millennial Burnout and Micromanagement The millennial generation, born between 1981 and 1996, experienced unique, micromanaged childhoods that have contributed significantly to their current struggles with burnout. Economic pressures and a heightened sense of fear prompted parents to obsessively oversee their children's lives and prioritize productivity and achievement over fun and exploration. This has notably impacted the ability of millennials to adapt to the demands and expectations of adult life. Think about the atmosphere of your childhood. Was it a carefree, self-directed experience, or were you constantly monitored, coached, and steered by adults? The type of environment recalls can reveal when you were born. For millennials, the latter scene was much more prevalent. The parenting shifts responsible for this tightly controlled upbringing can help us understand the challenges millennials face today, including the widespread phenomenon of burnout. Increased financial strain arose as income inequality sharply grew in the late 20th century, leading parents to anxiously prioritize their children's future career prospects. This redefined childhood as crucial training ground for adulthood, causing enjoyment to be replaced with accomplishment. Millennials' days were frequently filled with high-stakes organized sports and a flurry of classes designed for personal improvement, leaving little time for independent exploration. Yet, beyond parental focus on success, millennials were also kept on a short leash due to heightened fears around child safety. Beginning in the 1980s, the mainstream media dramatically amplified coverage of child abductions, giving birth to the stranger danger era. Although there was no actual rise in crimes against children, parents fell prey to the sense of impending doom that media coverage conveyed and significantly restricted their children's freedom. This relentless micromanagement during millennials' formative years has yielded a generation that finds it difficult to navigate the adult world with ease. The single-minded focus on productivity and self-improvement from their upbringing is a heavy burden. As a result, many in the millennial generation are grappling with burnout and experiencing challenges as they strive to achieve the adult-level self-reliance that was restricted during their youth. The Millennial College Dilemma Growing up, millennials were told that college was the gateway to success in their professional lives, and this is why they enrolled in colleges by the millions. However, they soon discovered that a college degree didn't carry as much weight as it once did and that it didn't guarantee them the level of success they had imagined. Many millennials pursued graduate degrees in an attempt to stand out but found themselves buried in debt and still struggling to find work. This experience not only exposed the myth of the life-changing degree but also shaped millennial attitudes toward work and determination. Millennials entered higher education with high expectations, believing that college was the natural next step for achieving personal and professional success. With middle-class students seeking sustained security and those from less fortunate backgrounds aiming for wealth, college seemed like a path to success for all. Unfortunately, the reality turned out to be a bitter pill for many millennials. As college degrees became more common, their significance diminished. Employers shifted their focus to the prestige of the institution where the applicant studied, leaving those from non-elite colleges at a disadvantage. In response, numerous millennials sought graduate degrees to enhance their resumes. Although this strategy worked for some, many continued to struggle in securing employment, and their financial burdens grew due to additional loans taken out to fund their further studies. What millennials overlooked was that a well-paying career isn't solely dependent on a degree. The availability of rewarding jobs without a degree, 
like HVAC installers, electricians, and pipe fitters, serve as a testament to this fact. Moreover, the ingrained notion that hard work always leads to success affected millennials' perspectives on work. Instead of challenging the existing system or demanding change when encountering difficulties in their job hunt, they chose to work even harder. Ultimately, the millennial myth surrounding college degrees not only led to disillusionment but also influenced their approach to work and perseverance in the face of adversity. The Passion Trap in Work In the past, jobs were primarily a means to earn a living, with people rarely having the opportunity to follow their passion. Today's millennials, however, have been told that their work should not only be a source of income, but also their life's focus and purpose. The concept of a dream job is appealing to many, but can lead to exploitation as numerous people compete for these limited positions. Employers capitalize on the passionate employee mindset, often offering lower wages and fewer benefits to those devoted to their jobs. Yet, millennials are gradually realizing the importance of prioritizing stability and financial security in their careers. Throughout history, people held jobs to provide for their basic needs, though the work may have been mundane. A miner or seamstress could take pride in their work, but rarely would anyone consider it a passion. The notion of merging one's passion and career is a relatively modern concept, especially for millennials who have been told to aim for fulfilling, purpose-driven work. However, this passion-driven mentality can make millennials more susceptible to exploitation. Highly sought-after, dream jobs, such as journalists or archaeologists, are in limited supply. As a result, companies can cut benefits and lower wages without facing a decrease in applicants. Employers take advantage of this mindset, assuming that passionate employees would be self-motivated and not require extra incentives, such as a decent salary or reasonable benefits. Job listings often reflect this attitude, with descriptions like coding ninjas or customer service rock stars attempting to create the illusion of an exciting work environment. Instead, such job titles tend to mask low-quality positions with inadequate compensation. Millennials are slowly recognizing the drawbacks of solely following their passion and are beginning to prioritize stability and financial security in their careers, much like previous generations. Instead of pursuing their dreams at all costs, many are opting for stable, well-paying jobs that provide a steady income and a chance to live a balanced life. The Gig Economy's Precarious Nature the emergence of Kelly Girls in the 1970s workplace revolutionized employment practices, setting the stage for today's gig economy. As temporary workers, Kelly Girls enjoyed few benefits beyond their hourly wage, making them an attractive option for employers looking to cut costs. Over time, the erosion of workplace protections and the rise of outsourcing have created a new class dubbed the precariat, comprised of workers with limited job security and benefits. Today, a significant portion of millennials find themselves as members of this precariat, experiencing precarious and irregular work that provides no scope for financial stability. When housewives turned temporary workers, known as Kelly Girls, entered the workforce in the 1970s, they changed the employment landscape. Employers found them ideal, as they didn't have to allocate benefits, sick leaves, or holidays to these workers, who were happy with their hourly wages. This setup was a precursor to the modern gig economy, which has led to dwindling job security for millennials. The rise in freelancers, contractors, and gig workers began in the 1980s and 1990s as stronger business models emerged, bypassing union protections and outsourcing jobs to temps or contract-based employees. This shift gave birth to a new class of workers, the precariat, who, akin to Kelly girls, are only entitled to their basic pay. Millennials, working as Uber drivers, freelance creatives, or adjunct professors, often find themselves in this precarious position. Previously, in the mid-20th century, the majority of a company's labor force was composed of direct employees, who enjoyed benefits, sick pay, and job security. They even had opportunities for career growth within the company. All of this contributed to a sense of financial security that was more widely accessible. However, such provisions now appear as luxuries for the precariat. 
Until changes are made to employment laws that force companies to treat their gig workers as actual employees, job security and financial stability will remain out of reach for many millennials. Office culture overwhelms millennials. The modern workplace has evolved into an environment where workers, particularly millennials, are engulfed in a culture of overwork. The availability of perks such as ping pong tables, snacks, and free lunches are not indicators of a relaxed office atmosphere, but rather a reflection of a work life balance that is increasingly blurred. The roots of this live in office culture can be traced back to investment banks that offered incentives for employees to work longer hours, but for those outside the banking sector, the rewards are not proportionate to the hours they invest. The rise of the live in office culture has led to an increase in hours spent at work reaching a tipping point where it's no longer just hard work, but a deeply embedded overwork culture. Millennials are the ones paying the price, as their work-life boundaries become more obscure. Office perks, such as ping-pong tables and free lunches, have ceased to signify a laid-back environment, instead, they now suggest that the workspace is more of a living space. This culture can be traced back to investment banks, as noted by American anthropologist Karen Ho in her book Liquidated. These banks enticed their employees to work considerably long hours through a series of rewards. Working past 7 p.m. would allow bankers to order company-funded takeout, while working a couple more hours would get them a complimentary cab ride home. As a result, working 13 or 14-hour days became a routine, even a point of pride, due to these incremental conveniences. However, there is a contrasting experience between investment bankers and other millennials. While bankers might work 70-hour weeks, it could financially benefit them as their earnings are largely correlated to the profits they generate, resulting in substantial bonuses. On the other hand, most workers are left with no other option but to work grueling hours because the workload demands it. Unfortunately, the rewards for them are not as lucrative as in the case of bankers. In essence, the contemporary workplace is difficult to leave behind. Millennials are facing the brunt of this always-on environment, in which incentives and perks no longer contribute to a harmonious work-life balance but instead entice them to adopt an unhealthy lifestyle centered around overwork. Finding a way to create and maintain healthy boundaries between work and personal life remains a challenge and of vital importance. Tech Overuse Draining Millennials Millennials, after devoting numerous hours to work, might expect a relaxing free time for themselves, however, they find themselves continually attached to their phones, which is slowly draining their energy. The never-ending need for comparison on platforms like Instagram, along with an immediate and constant influx of bad news on social media, has resulted in increased stress and exhaustion among millennials, who already deal with enough pressure from work and college debt. In today's world, millennials have been known to work immensely long hours. Naturally, one would assume they would cherish relaxing pastimes during their scant hours of free time. Regrettably, this isn't the case. Most millennials, more often than not, find themselves rummaging through their phones, consuming their lives with technology. The worrisome truth is that millennials' constant use of technology is gradually exhausting them. Initially, Social media seemed like a tool to connect people, making the world a smaller, friendlier place. But things have taken a different turn since then. Take Instagram, for instance. It started as a fun escape filled with photos of cherished memories, pets, and scenic beauty. Over time, it became a platform for people to showcase their experiences and engage in a constant comparison of lifestyles, leaving their own lives feeling inadequate. It's not just Instagram that wears millennials down, the news takes an even greater toll on their mental health. With climate change, violence against women, refugee crises, and mass shootings globally, there's no escaping disconcerting news. The rise of social media like Twitter, where updates are immediate and relentless, results in the constant bombardment of distressing information. Most millennials feel compelled to stay informed, even if they can't directly change the world themselves. However, this perpetual exposure to negativity is taking a heavy toll on their overall well-being. Millennials already face various challenges, 
balancing their careers with paying off college loans, economic instability, and mounting professional pressure. Adding the strain of the world's misfortunes to their daily lives is something they can undoubtedly do without. With the ever-present allure of technology, it's essential for millennials to recognize the need for a healthy balance and cultivate habits that help them disconnect from the virtual and invest in their peace of mind. In conclusion, Can't Even A reveals the myriad ways in which millennial burnout has become an all-too-common reality. From their overly structured childhoods to the academic and work-oriented pressures they face as adults, millennials are held captive by a system that values productivity above all else. Add to this the false promise of passion-based careers, the rise of the gig economy, and the ubiquity of technology, it's no wonder that millennials struggle to find a semblance of balance amidst the chaos. Peterson's analysis encourages us to question the very structures that define this generation's experience and to seek a brighter, more sustainable future for ourselves and the generations to come.